Welcome on in to the Utah Blogcast. I'm Steve Bartle, Utah Insider for KSL Sports. Joined today by our guy, Keanu Tanavasa. Yes, sir. Back at it again. <laughs> How's it going, man? Doing great. Doing phenomenal. Again. And I, 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 yeah, dude, I love my state. I love my place. I love my team. I love, <laughs> I love Steve Bartle for all you blockheads out there. Uh, I love this place, man. I'm in a good spot in life. Just a lot of love. I love, love it so much. Yeah, love it, man. Yeah, um, dude, how's uh, how's the week going? How's how's it been getting back into school as a student athlete? Just how's what's that like? Um, I'd like to say it's phenomenal. <laughs> maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not completely in love with what's going on right now. Um, <laughs> we're going to peel back the layers and really figure this out. Yeah. Now I gotta, now I gotta break it down and be real with the blockheads, man. Um, school is tough, man. In season, it's tough. It's, it's nice for the guys that have graduated. You got like June and Aliki, you know, certain guys that have got their degrees and they're taking just these bubble gum courses, just, <laughs> you know, it's kind of nice. You know, they're like, Oh, I got like one assignment every month and I just, and then I just show up to class maybe once a month and I'm good. <laughs> You know, and then I'm over here. I'm like, dude, I got quizzes due at five o'clock for some reason. And I'm at practice at from two to six. Oh, my gosh, man. Oh, it's killing There's me. nothing like it. Nothing like it, though. Nothing like it. You love it. You love I, the I, grind. I still love the grind. Still love the grind. Yeah. You know, we say student athlete. I like to say athlete student. But, you know. As we all like to view ourselves, right. athlete students. Right. Athlete first. But definitely, I, you know, don't let my parents hear that. Definitely should be student athlete podcast athlete mm. athlete podcaster that's i'm gonna which one are we you are for sure athlete podcaster yeah. i'm podcaster athlete i don't know you could be an athlete podcaster uh, i mean you're very kind <laughs> hey but i mean <laughs> let's keep it real here Ken. oh yeah you're right see i wasn't thinking about the line though i was thinking about more of the tee off you oh know? yeah if we're talking golf we're talking golf you're an athlete that's podcaster. The, that's where we judge athleticism is on the that's, golf course that's prime athleticism oh yes keanu <laughs> oh man <laughs> love it we were talking before we started recording about some of the weightlifting feats that you uh, <laughs> have enjoyed oh, yeah. recently. Yeah. And I like to work out, sticking with the, the theme here, right? with the uh, with the topic. And, you know, I'm, I'm moving to 25. We love it. Fairly, fairly easily. I shouldn't <laughs> say easily. I don't want to say easily. <laughs> but I'm moving it well. I'm Firm in the double rating. digits. Yeah. You yeah. know, 10, oh. 12, struggling, you know. It's great reps. But you're over here just repping them out. <laughs> I, I, I need to be able to, man. I'm fighting 600 pounds on the line. I got to be able to press 225. <laughs> Who's the strongest dude on the team? On the bench press. On, on the, the bench, bench. On bench. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I would love to claim the title, but I would have to say I'm second. It's Van Fillinger. That dude. That is dude, a dude. Uh, yeah. He's a freak. That's a freak, man. I don't know, you know, a lot of our fans, a lot of the black kids, they've never seen him with this shirt off. Even he's a Bro, specimen. He's a specimen. Yeah. So he's he's the king of the bench press. The squat is probably Peppa. That man can squat weight like no other. Just wrap What are we up. talking? We're talking like yesterday. Squat, I love squat. I love squatting. I, I'm a fan, not too much. I'd rather bench. Um we're talking like seven plates, six, seven plates. And for reps, we're not talking one rep. We're talking five to ten reps. <laughs> <laughs> that's sensational as, <laughs> as one. That's another. That's that's a freak. I wouldn't say specimen. That's a freak. Right that now. is a freak, man. Yeah. Well, dude, I'm glad that we brought these guys up because that kind of transitions well into the topic that Sorry. we need to dive into. Yeah. The win, 23 to 12 win over Baylor mm -hmm. on Saturday. And those two guys in particular, Simote yeah. Peppa, Van Fillinger, had fantastic performances i think van right. finished with the sack he dude <laughs> van looks great mm. so far yep like how, you see him in practice every day mm. do you have you noticed a difference in van you know because you you've, you guys have all played together for the last couple of years but have you noticed a difference in van in terms of how he's feeling how he's playing because like to us like it's very apparent but do you have you noticed that yeah um, so Van and I have been becomes, you know, we've been extremely close since I came in yeah. and respecting our relationship, not diving too far into things, 
But talking about that man, I mean, last year was rough for him. Right. He hurt his ankle. He was playing hurt for this team and he sacrificed a lot. Yeah. You know? And so along with that, we have to recognize that that the pressure of an athlete to perform on something that's hurting and then also your own pressure of how you know you can perform. Yeah. That both of those things combined take a mental toll on an individual. And so I noticed that last year, man, and, and he, he grinded it out. He sacrificed for the team. He did. Um, and I think I, I, you know, in the moment, in the season, yeah. fans, like, we don't know that. No. But you talk to people in the off season and you realize, oh, man, he was not right. And yeah. he was not close to, to no. what he's truly capable of. No. And, and you're seeing it now. So you have to wonder, what's the contrast between last year and this year? Oh, man. And now you could see, and, and I love it because the fans are seeing, and not only that, but I get to see the background of, he not only is playing like he wants to play, but he's playing as happy, as free, as mentally, you know, uh, stress-free. I mean, there's still the, the, the tax of the game, right. you know, the worry to sure. perform, but it's not based around an injury, the pressure that he has to fill a spot. It's primarily based on his performance has just changed and he's you know playing the way he wants to yeah um and that's, you saw that man yeah like that's that's so cool for for you guys in the book because you see that with everybody yeah right you see the stress the mm -hmm. weight of of you know needing to perform with everybody and to see guys have those moments i think is is truly special and van man like van wagon fillinger <laughs> he is a wagon that's, this year hop on board that's a wagon obviously man. like he made a couple plays, stringing it out, getting Finn to the sideline. Yep. He made the one diving tackle on beautiful. the... And you're just like, we've never seen this from Van. And, and no. so just, just to kind of piggyback off of that, like just fantastic. And it's it's got to be super rewarding for him and for everybody else, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, you talk to Powell and the confidence of him in his room is strong you know yeah. he's so confident in who they are and then you talk to you know me the other d-line members man it's a it's such a blessing to have guys like that on the edges yeah you know it makes me so confident that you know i'm not fighting this battle alone and i'm not fighting with guys that are good at what they do i'm fighting with guys that are phenomenal and they can take over a play yeah and so together ah oh, it's it's amazing i love that and and so uh smote pepper mm -hmm. let's stick there and then we'll kind of get into some other things. But Samote Peppa played yeah. uh, uh, against Baylor. He didn't play week one against ASU, but he got in uh, and played most of the game, mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, you know, he looked disruptive, man. Yeah. He was getting into the backfield. You guys were doing like this gap exchange. Is that what that is? The yeah. little tackle, tackle. Yeah, we have our loop, own little plays little that we're repping in there, something like that. Dude, little twist it was, action. It was beautiful, man. Yeah. Watching him and Junior do that over and over. Yep. It seemed and it seemed to like be it seemed to disrupt Most Baylor's option. Yeah. Fairly effectively. Yeah. You it, it's hard to, you know, compete with big guys that can move. And Samote was moving, man. That's a big guy that can move right there. <laughs> yeah, That's a big guy that can move. We're talking seven plates on the squat rack and repping it out. Oh, yeah. And he's moving, man. But not just off, not just the weights. He's moving off the line. That's yeah. scary. Dude, He. this is the thing that, like, Peppa is so scary because you look at him and, he, and you just think, oh, he can't really move. Yeah. yeah. He's got some bursts. Uh-huh. You guys, you know, the, the people listening, <laughs> I, I promise I wish, you. I wish you could have seen your face just now. Just like, <laughs> you guys have no idea. They know. <laughs> they know. I do. I promise you. I know exactly the what it is. The expression was, was perfect. Oh, it is one of a kind to go against that man. I imagine, I don't even know who to compare. It's probably like going against Vita Vea. Oh, Just a man, huge tank a that moves. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I've blocked him a couple of times during practice when I'm on, you know, PAT and he's the rushing defender. And I, I don't know how they block him in real life. Yeah. You just have to, you know, summon the powers of God to try and <laughs> block that man. I know I'm not blocking him. <laughs> I'm going, I'm tapping out, coach. Don't put me in front of him. Sheesh. I love it, man. Um, so, all right. So going back to Saturday and just kind of resetting here a little bit. 
because we like this is us like we we just dive right into the yeah. deep end and we're just we're off and running <laughs> but to reset but, you know, obviously utah gets the win 23 to 12 mm-hmm. um utah starts out 17-0 in the first quarter two quick tutties yep. within the first seven minutes and i think everybody was kind of feeling the same thing where it's like all right this is the offense going to put on a show where it's going to be a short day for everybody and mm-hmm. and uh, we'll get out of this one with the dub and yet you know you get into that second quarter things kind of bog down and then cam risings uh you know exits the game with that injury right um you know for you guys obviously cam means a lot to this team when mm-hmm. you see that What's sort of the mentality? What's the talk on the sideline when you see, you know, your leader or anybody of that status, uh, you know, of that status is a status good, good word, yeah. Come off the uh, come off the field with an injury. Just what's kind of the mindset of everybody else? Uh, we got to. Uh, well, I think initially it's it's always like, you know, darn, you know, that's one of our dudes, right? It's our guy right there, you know, and and I say status because we have phenomenal players across the board. And then we have veteran players that we look to. Yeah. And that's natural. That's on teams, you know. Yeah. He's not better than anyone else. But he's, who, But he, we know who he is and what right. he represents. And the confidence that he brings to, per se, a younger guy who's still a great player but is still developing that same level of confidence. Mm-hmm. And so when someone like that goes down, I think initially we can sense a drop off of, darn, you know. Sure. I wish that didn't happen. And I think that's natural. Like you could feel it. It's not just players and no. like, you know, it's, it's tough because that's your guy, yeah. you know, and, and regardless of whether it's Cam or somebody else, like it's right. one of your guys. Right. And, and obviously I think that's a natural reaction. Uh, fans, you could feel the air kind of leave the stadium mm-hmm. a, as well. It's just natural. It's yeah. just natural. Yeah. And, and so from that point, it then goes to, and our team does very well at this. It's okay. Let's go. Let's step up. Yeah. You know, and, and and I love Coach Witt shared this, you know, and he was like, look, it's not on Isaac Wilson to come in and be phenomenal. It's not on the next guy. You know, if, if you know, we talk about Van Fillinger, if Van Fillinger, God willing, you know, never happens. But if he goes down, it's not on just the DN to come in and play and match how good he is. It's on the whole team to elevate collectively. All other 10 guys on the field got to do more. You got to battle more because we realize, well, someone went down. All right, let's all climb together. And I think that's what we're getting to and continually growing right now is, okay, Cam went down. Okay, Isaac's in. Let's go. Everyone's got to elevate. We're not just going to put all the pressure on that one individual. Let's all climb together. And yeah. Do you feel like maybe this can be a silver lining type of moment because you know coming into the season and you know all off season all the talk was that cam is back cam is going to be the guy to get utah to the playoff and obviously there's a lot to that there's Mm -hmm. you know he's a very good quarterback and you need good quarterbacks but this is still football and you need all other 21 23 other players to contribute to this sort of season yeah. where you guys want to compete for a championship, do you feel like this can be a silver lining type moment that, hey, we got, we all now have to step up without Cam potentially and, and with him being injured? Do you feel like that's something that the team can now, okay, it's on us? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would definitely say that that's what this has been. It's definitely the, opportunity to recognize whatever's thrown at us we gotta rise to the occasion we're not gonna dang you know we lost a a cornerback we lost a safety we lost a running back crap okay that's the season that's not what we're gonna do right you know and that's not what we did saturday and we could have still i think elevated even more Mm -hmm. which is something we've communicated as a team throughout this week going into utah state but it's perfect. I mean, uh, we love adversity. We're at home in adversity. That's where we always be, have been, and that's what we handle. And so to at face adversity now, you know, two games into the season, well, good. You know, we did this all off season. We battled all off season. We're used to this. It's nothing new. And so from that, it's then, okay, let's keep going. Thank you for, you know, don't do that to my quarterback ever again or I'll handle you myself. <laughs> you know, you're lucky Scally won't let me run to the other side. Because believe me, the the speed that we sat, we're sitting on the bench and saw it and stood up and ran to the field. <laughs> 
I felt as fast as money parks, okay? <laughs> Let's just say that. So, I mean, no thank you for doing that. But at the same time, okay, we're facing adversity, you know? Good. Let's get used to it and let's keep going. Man. But I think that that's, that's super unique. So, we're now... 15 minutes into the episode, we probably should address the elephant in the room here, Keanu. <laughs> right. We didn't see you on the field on Saturday. Oh, you good? Oh, I'm good. I'm good, man. I, I'm feeling good. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, went back to practice, returned to practice. Um, man, I was moving. Good. Feeling good. Good. Yeah, I'm excited. Love that. I, I, I told coach, you know, it's kryptonite to be to not be on that field playing. Yeah, like, what's, what's that like for you? Because you... Went through pregame warmups against Baylor, yep. and you looked fine. But like for you, so what's that like? Like going through it all, and obviously you probably had an idea that you weren't going to play prior yeah. to the game. Yeah. But being on that sideline, not being able to be out there, what's that like for you? Uh, um, it's a uh, man. It's 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 I, I, it's a depressing state to be yeah. honest man yeah, i'm sure uh i don't battle depression you know i think everyone does at some point in their life sure. but man that's what it feels like it's it's heart-wrenching yeah the reason being is man I, I trained for this for nine months yeah you know the day after northwestern i remember like all right let's get back to work and i just remember and grind and i i, I you know pride myself on i haven't missed a day mm -hmm. i haven't taken a day off because i don't believe in those i think there's days to to be cautious to about rest. the way you're acting sure yeah and to recover yeah maybe it's not a heavy load that day it's sure. more of a recovery day but it's not a day off and man to then have you know nine months and feel like well now i'm sitting on the side you know it's it's difficult and it's definitely one of those mentally taxing battles that we face as athletes but you know i'm good i'm back <laughs> love it i'm love good it. that's all that matters right and you know, i think you talk to athletes and you miss time and you gain an appreciation for all of that right like yeah. like you're saying like it's not just yeah. you're gaining an appreciation for it, football in the moment but no for the appreciation of all the work that you put in prior. Yeah. I think that's such a big thing cuz you realize like I have put in a lot of work and I have I do I want to capitalize on these moments cuz you yeah. only get a few. No. There's you only, only get a handful. In the season. Yeah. But that's what part of the you know motivation to kind of sit out was yeah. was it's better to miss one than to miss five. You yeah. know. With already the limited season that we get to put our craft to the work, you know, to performance. It's well, let's be smart. It could get worse or I could sit one and then I could be back for all 10. And then, so then that's just that smart decision, you know, trying to be maturity uh, in, in that decision has, you know, opened my eyes to a lot more about how to go about doing things the right way. That's good, man. Um, so, yeah. So obviously Utah gets the win 23-12. That second half defensive performance was, I think, pretty impressive. So obviously the first quarter you know, Utah, the defense holds Baylor to minus 10 yards. Mm. That's that's incredible. You hold a power five opponent to negative yardage yeah. in, in any duration of the game. Yeah. You know, that first quarter, that's impressive. But I thought the second half performance was even more impressive. Well, we've already kind of talked about it. Um, but it felt like, I don't want to say you guys flipped a switch. Because mm. as you alluded, you know, Kyle Whittingham said, it's on everybody else to step up. Right. And... And, you know, but I, I do wonder, like, going back to Cam and kind of coming into the game, feeling a certain way about how this game may play out mm. and it changes, how rewarding is it to see the unit step up in that sort of manner when when you needed, when when the defense needed to be great? You guys were great. And, like, how rewarding is that to see that from you guys? Uh Again, it's it's extremely re rewarding because it wasn't just me doing nine months of work in the off season. It was all of us collectively. Yeah. You know, I did my own things on my own time, you know, which helped me to become the individual that I am. But we also did things consistently together. And so I was able to in those, you know, super tiring workouts in the winter to look left and right and be like, man, these are my guys. Yeah. You know, I can step up. We can all elevate and we can continue to work together. And that's what they did. They they saw, okay, one of our guys is hurt, but let's finish the game. Let's finish strong. We never quit on a workout then. We're not going to quit now. And I love it. Man, I wasn't on the field, but I loved 
the maturity of the team to finish strong. You know, that's something that I love that Utah always has is we always finish strong. We never fold before the whistle's done. We're always going to continue to push until we know there's, you know, three zeros on that game clock and we're done. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's big. And and again, it just speaks to the culture mm-hmm. in that pro in the program and, yep. and the the mindset of everybody in the program. Um, and that's that's super super cool. Um, all right, dude. So sticking with the weekend this past week, uh, week two of college football. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I watched a lot of football, handful of games. Did yep. you get a Did you get to watch some games this weekend? I did. I got to watch some. You know, it was huge. We always try to watch our opponents. You know, see the, sure. for the upcoming week. So I've focused on Utah State a lot. You know, but I also watched the NIU versus Notre Dame game. Ooh, um, yeah, great game, man. Yeah, uh, that was a man. It was one thing to watch them perform and play. It was another thing to kind of see and the coach's speech after the game. You know, I mean, you emotional, got, man. Yeah, Ugh. that's and and they're ranked number five, man. Yeah, that's a big win, dude. Five, in their house, in their house, in I, their house. Man, I would have loved to just be in the locker room with that team after the game, just to feel. You know, those feelings are intense. They're deep. They're hard rooted, and those are players that work hard. You know, and then and then to know that you got ninety percent of that stadium to ninety nine percent that was like these guys are nothing, <laughs> they won't amount to nothing, they can't play with our team. Well, now you can eat your words, you know. Yeah, I and loved that's it. that's amazing. So, Coach Thomas Hammock, he's mm-hmm. the coach there at NIU, and uh, that post game interview was yeah. just you could feel it, and you could feel that. The, the recognition of all that work, like we've yeah. been talking about with you, and, and it's really cool to have those moments. So that's what makes this game <laughs> so special. Man. Yeah. It really is. Like yeah. that that emotion of a team working and putting in time together mm-hmm. um, and, and accomplishing something great, like that's that's incredible. So yeah. that's a great, great game. I'm glad you watched that one. Um, Colorado, Nebraska. I watched that one. I loved watching I that one. A little bit, um, yeah. Did you watch a little bit of that? Yeah. Um, it's interesting, man. Nebraska and 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 that they've got that thing going with Dylan Raiola, and mm-hmm. obviously they get the win. Coach Sanders, Coach Prime, <clears throat> with uh, with that. Obviously, we'll see them later in the year. But do you? So you, I, you mentioned you're watching, you know, Utah State mm-hmm. getting prep for for the next week. Do you pay attention to? To other programs, future future opponents down the road. For sure, as I mean, it's can. yeah. When you love the game and you want to be a student of the game, you know you're gonna watch, and and you're gonna especially watch the guys that you know. Okay, at some point I'll be facing you. Yeah, you know. But it's a it's such a one week focus. You know, as an athlete, you gotta have quick turnaround to say, great game. What's next? You know. Yeah. Wow, I played really well. How can I play better this next game? You know, and that turnaround is so critical for athletes. So it's the same for me. So it's hard to kind of look at another team and be like, oh, I got to get ready for Colorado. It's like, I don't really care about them right now. I will. Prioritize. Yeah. <laughs> we got to prioritize Absolutely. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, man, I'm looking at Utah State. I want to know everything there is to know about them. Yeah. So let's let's dive into Utah State then. Obviously, they're coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, what stood out to you in their, you know, 48 to 0 loss to USC? That's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, Um Going to the Coliseum, that's still a tough place to win, right. which I think we know. Am, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. you've won there. Yeah, and it it takes a lot to win there. Mm-hmm. You know, when they've got that program going, it's it still it can be an intimidating place when they've got that place going. It is. Yeah. Um, but you guys, um, you know, have gone in there, got the wins. Uh, Bryson Barnes, obviously, last year, twenty twenty three. What do you remember? I guess before we get into Utah State, what do you remember of that game? Because I'm curious. Um, dude. <laughs> um, I remember missing a fumble that was right in front of my face. And no, yeah, it was terrible. It still haunts me to this day. I, I have nightmares sometimes about it. Yeah. Um, Caleb Williams went to load up. I, I beat my guard real quick, and he went to load up his throw, and Obst. he he just fumbled the ball, <laughs> and I was going to hit him, and I was like, wait, the and ball. so yeah, I was like the ball's <laughs> out. <laughs> So me, I'm like full speed heading towards him. And then once the ball flies, I change, I try to change direction and I just wasn't quick enough. I dove, it bounced right through my hands and then he dove on it and uh, killed Mass me. and momentum. It's killed tough, me, man. man. Yeah. 
<laughs> I remember going to the side and was like, I just lost us the game. I was like, we lost. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we get the ball, we start marching down and I see Cole Becker warming up. And so I go sit by him and I'm like, look, it's not about me. Let's see if I can help this guy have the confidence that he needs. So I was just the whole time locking Cole. I'm trying to communicate these things to him, not be too much, mm -hmm. you know, let him stay in his flow, but just be an extra voice to be like, hey, man, I'm here with you. Yeah, I believe in you. You're going to win this game. I, you got it. There's, you know, in these affirmations. And, and then he goes out there. I see him run on. Oh, we get sick, man. And I'm sitting there. Now, mind you, while I'm sitting there and he's warming up, behind us is the student section. And they're screaming at Cole. They're like, 36, you suck. Cole Becker. You know, they're trying to throw him off his groove. And here I am battling like 100 students <laughs> and their voices. We believe in you, Cole. Oh, Cole, I love you. We got you, bro. Yeah. And then he goes out, you know, kicks it in. Man, we rush the field and great feeling. Oh, man, love that. Um, uh, Bryson Barnes, obviously, with the run there and, and all that. Bryson Barnes with Utah State this past week. Struggled a little, little bit. Uh, 18 of 27, 103 yards through an interception. But we know what Bryson Barnes is. And I'd be curious just to kind of hear, you know, what he meant to you guys last year and, and just kind of the um, your thoughts on the pig farmer. Yeah, the pig farmer, man. Uh, I got a great relationship with him, but I'm not talking to him this week. He's an enemy. Good. So yeah, we don't. Okay. I'm not supposed All right, to, we can know. end it there. Right. It's love, yeah. but not this week. No, but he's a, what do you, so, you know, I'll give him credit where credit's due. I'm not going to talk to him, but I'll talk to the blockheads okay, about okay, him. Okay, all right. You know, so I, uh, to me. Listen, man, it's it's game week, so I get it. Like, if, if we need to avoid certain <laughs> subjects, we yeah. can, like. No, it's okay. It, it's more fuel to the fire, if anything. Okay, good. Um, And uh, the one thing I would say is who he was to us last year was he's a fighter. Yeah. Someone that doesn't fold, someone that doesn't quit. And he filled that role. He stepped up. And I'm, you know, appreciative of for everything he's done, you know. And so I imagine that's what he's going to be for them. He's going to yeah. be a fighter. He's going to be someone that's not going to quit. And that's good. I, I don't, you know, I want him to quit. I'll make, you know, I'll try and force him to quit. You know, hit him yeah. hard enough, do those yeah. things. Mm, yeah. uh, Love it. But it'll be good. The pig farmer is, you know, one of a kind, hard worker. Yeah. Uh, and I, I've always had respect for people that are willing to work hard in their respective fields. Love that. Um, I can definitely... Uh, share. I share the same sentiment. Just yeah. bust your butt, and you'll have my respect. And yeah. so I think like that is absolutely something that uh, you know Barnes was all about. He was all about the work, and he put yeah. it in. And you can uh, you can trust that he will do the same this week against against you guys. For and sure. so you know, for you when you have that sort of relationship, what sort of is it a unique dynamic, or is it just business as usual in terms of your prep and how you're trying to get ready for the, for the week? Um, uh, man, I talked about last week. It's, it's, you know, you asked the question last week was, do we alter our, our practice? Do we feel in a change in intensity, yeah. you know, going against a different opponent? And I think uh, the principle that I try to live by is just the principle of consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of who's in front of me, I got to do my job yeah. and I want to do it the best I can. So, man, we might be friends off the field, but I know who my brothers are in the game. And that's the guys who are standing beside me, yeah. standing behind me. When when that helmet comes on, those pads come on. It doesn't matter who's in front of me. I don't I don't care about you. Yeah, you're not my responsibility. Everyone I'm standing with is mine, and so I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fight like hell for the guys that are with me. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious, right? So, you know, obviously in 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 the week and in prep and in you know film rooms talk, we always kind of re relate that more to like skill positions and the quarterback position and like how is the quarterback going to exploit the the defense mm. I, i'd be curious like as a defensive tackle right we kind of just assume like you see ball get see ball, ball snapped <laughs> rush the passer right get ball carrier and like right. that's it yeah but like for you and in, in your prep are you watching are you trying to pick up on 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 keys on on clues and that sort of stuff like is yeah. that the sort of stuff that you're doing for sure. If you're not watching film, regardless of the position you're in, then you're not getting better. You're not yeah. playing to the peak performance that you should in your position. Um, I don't, it's very different, you know, and a part of that is understanding what the game is. 
for for our safeties. It's I gotta understand passing route concepts. Yeah, I gotta understand these things, man. I don't I don't care what route they're running, right? So when people are like see ball get ball, it's like well that's not my only thing. I care about the protection that they have. Yeah, what type of puncher is this offensive guard? Is he a catcher? Does he stab and then grab with the other? Is he a double mm-hmm. puncher? Is he top heavy? You know what's his base like? Oh, does he like to sit? Does he like to lean? So there's a lot that goes into the art of being a D lineman. Oh man. <laughs> and because it is an art it is it really is an art yeah i love it yeah <laughs> i mean me, that's I football football is is an art right yeah but, but defensive tackle everything like you can break it down and we can yeah. get into the the nitty-gritty of it and it's yeah. like it's beautiful to talk about because yeah. you're setting up things to counter things absolutely to react to to things yep. and it's just it's just fun man it is it's a chess match and i love chess i love chess and 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 to be able to play that with an opponent's skill set an opponent's style an opponent's mind man when you get into that flow it takes over yeah and a lot of people don't understand that you know but they see it yeah you know you can see, see the results yeah but they don't understand how and yeah. and i love that what's behind the why Love that. Man, I love that. So, you know, looking ahead with uh, with Utah State, what have you seen from them, obviously, beyond Bryson Barnes, what we know there? What have you seen from from the Aggies through two weeks? Um, their running back is pretty good, number three. He's a yeah. good, hard runner. Um, Rashul Faison. Yep. He's yeah. a good one. He's, a, he's good. He's a man. I like the way he plays. Um and so he'll be someone that, that that has a target on his back on Sunday, uh, uh, excuse me, Saturday. And so that'll be huge. And then I think they're just a very unified team. Yeah. I think that's what they do well. I think their O-line tries to work well together. You know, I don't know too much about the receivers. Again, I don't pay too much attention to them. Sure. Um, but going off of the O-line, they're, you know, they, they're very unified. Yeah. And, and I got to give them credit for that. That's great. And it'll be interesting because this is uh, this is kind of a unique one. This is an in-state rivalry, but it's not the in-state rivalry right. with Utah State. No. Um, it's going to be a long bus ride. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah. What is that going to be like for you? Are you going to be just headphones on, locked in? Like, what's the what's the bus ride going to be like? The bus there? ride will be... <laughs> Because there's not a lot of look at. <sighs> no. <laughs> not not a lot. Right up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I, I got to figure that out. You know, it's not game day yet, so I got some time. <laughs> it's an extended bus ride. Yeah. So, you know. Not a fan. Get some motivational songs or whatever. Right. What is your song, by the way? Do you My have song? Your motivational I song. I, I listen to speakers. Oh, okay. All man, right. I love Ray Lewis, you know, Inky Johnson, all those guys. Oh, dude. You know. That's my stuff right yeah, there. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm telling you, when I'm on the treadmill <laughs> and I've got it on an incline, three yeah. and a half incline, yep. two and a half speed, uh-huh. I've got my motivational speakers on full blast. That's with me. The, with the airport. I'm, I'm walking speed. with an intensity unknown to mankind, bro. I've I got love that, man. I've got them all just yelling in my ear. Dude, that's me. Everyone <laughs> always asks me, okay, what do you listen to? What do you, you know, what's your style? What you know? What songs you and I'm like, man, I'm not listening to music, man. <laughs> These guys are yelling in my ear. I'm 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 feeling the strength of a hundred men right now because this guy's yelling in my ear. And, You've got to overcome the adversity, and I'm yeah, just dude. on the treadmill, man, just cruising, and <laughs> this, I'm like, yeah. This treadmill has no idea what it's going through. <laughs> this treadmill's got nothing on me. <laughs> Dude, that is uh, me, man. That's me, man. That is that is me in my lane on the treadmill. So next time, if there are people listening, there are people listening, and shout out to you guys listening that bump into me at the gym or wherever. Let's share a moment, right? And and share our thoughts yeah. on uh, on motivational speakers because I'm all about it. Um, all right, dude. Well, uh, anything else you got before we wrap this one up? Um, no, nah, I don't think so, man. I think. It's going to be another week, you know, go, we're going to go and get it and do the best that we can. Uh, I love our pod. I love this podcast, man. I love oh, yeah. talking. And we'll, as we get going and, you know, things start developing, we'll, we'll, we'll have a lot of fun. We'll have some creative segments and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So I'm excited about that, but, right on. um, dude, appreciate you, man. Um, I don't think, uh, I've expressed that to you. I appreciate you doing this and Thank appreciate you, uh, 
you know, being so great in doing this, like not just, you're not just doing it. You're, you've embraced it. Yeah. And it's so fun to see that, to have that. And so for me to you, man, thank you for, for doing this. I don't think I said that last week. And so that's on me and I'm making sure to do that this week. We said it off the mic, so we it's did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we did. You know, so, uh, but I want to make sure everybody knows that. So, um, well, cool, man. Well, we'll obviously there will be a, a contingency of Utah fans up there this weekend up in Logan. Yes, uh, it's going to be a great day. It'll be a, a, a great, a uh, great game. Obviously, we hope, and you know, you guys just continue to put in the work and enjoy the success, and yes, that's what it's all about, man. So, uh, we'll wrap this one up for myself, Steve Bartle, for Keanu Tanavasa. Yes, this is the Utah Blockcast.